Today we're going to be covering how to measure direct current voltage and amperage using a multimeter. I'll be covering this with both an auto ranging multimeter and a manually selecting multimeter. Manually selecting meters are going to have a whole bunch of settings. You'll see on some just a few settings. On these guys, we're going to be looking at this window over here, what that means, and this window here and that guy. Every multimeter is going to be able to measure direct current an amperage how much it's going to be able to do of that is going to depend meter to meter some meters are going to be able to measure up to 10 amps of direct current with the meter if you need to do more than that say if you're working with battery banks with your rv or something like that i would recommend getting an amp clamp that can measure direct current uh, anything more than 10 amps with the meter is just not going to happen. So let's go ahead and get started. On our meter, the solid and dash line is to indicate direct current. And then this one has a V under it. So what it's trying to tell me is this for this is for measuring direct current voltage. And this setting is for direct current amperage. I also have more than two ports on my meter. And you're going to want to pay attention. This port's for measuring voltage. And this port's for measuring amperage. And and then it should tell you how much amperage it's rated for. On this meter here, I can do 200 milliamps of direct current using this port, but if I do anything more than that, I'm gonna need to be utilizing this port. And that's what it's trying to signify to you right there. Another thing that we need to keep in mind when we're measuring direct current is our lead polarity. That means your black and red lead, it's going to matter which one you use it for or your measurement may not come back properly. It could tell your meter it's out of range or the most likely case, it'll simply just have a negative sign displayed on the meter telling you that the polarity that you're using is reversed from what it should be. Either because the circuit's been reversed or because your leads are reversed okay so that's something to pay attention to let's go ahead and just start with direct current voltage and make a measurement i have a little circuit over here now this measurement's going to be done in parallel to my circuit so my circuit can be on it doesn't have to have a load it just has to have voltage present go ahead and do our dc voltage measurement notice red to red black to black and i'm showing 11.8 volts now if i reverse the polarity on my leads red to black black to red i'm still getting 11.8 volts but we're seeing that negative sign that I was talking about earlier. Let's see what that looks like on a manually selecting multimeter. On a manually selecting multimeter, it may look very similar to this. We're seeing voltage direct current. It has a lightning bolt indicating that there is gonna be live voltage, so we need to be careful of that. It's also saying that we can measure up to 600 volts. And what does that mean? Well, these are for different resolutions. If we start at the 600 volts, it's gonna be a certain resolution. And as we go down, it's going to refine it. I have a 12 volt circuit that I'm trying to measure. So that would mean that this 20 volt setting would be ideal and the most accurate for my measurement. If I go below that 20 to the two volt setting, it's gonna show that it's out of range or that it's open. If I am at the 600, it might show 12. Let's see. Okay, let's start at the 600 volt range. Be mindful of our polarity, measuring in parallel. Okay, it does show a 12. Now the next setting is 200, and now I have a decimal point on my meter. Let's take another measurement. So now it's showing 11.9. As we refine our resolution, we're gonna get more and more accurate. Now I set it to the 20 volt, now we have two decimal places. We're showing 11.74. However, if I go all the way down to two, it's giving me an OL. That's saying that it's out of range and that's something to pay attention to. And if I put it to 200 millivolts, that's what the lowercase m is for on my meter. Capital M is for mega or millions. Little m is for milli. Again, I have an OL. So that's our DC voltage measurements. Now, when performing DC amperage measurements, these measurements are gonna be done in series. What does that mean? That means that we're gonna be using the meter as a jumper cable to complete our circuit to make our measurement. So I'll be removing my power leads and using my meter as my power leads. Okay, for doing these measurements, I'm gonna wanna make sure I have my red lead put in the amperage port and it's telling me I have a 10 amp 
fuse connection. If I go outside of that 10 amps, or if I short something out, that fuse is gonna pop. And then my, feeder, my meter is not gonna work properly anymore. So something to keep in mind. Sometimes you can pop that fuse in there, and then afterwards you're getting weird measurements, you're not quite sure what's going on. Check that fuse in there. I've set my meter to amperage DC, and I know that I'm good for up to 10 amps. I've turned on power to my circuit, but my light isn't turning on because my meter is going to be used to complete the circuit. Polarity is a factor in this as well. You can see because my flow is backwards with my leads, I'm going from black to red, there's gonna be a negative sign. If I switch it over, now we don't have a negative sign and now we have our amperage measurement. With DC, you're gonna have to be careful of the polarity of your leads and look out for that negative sign. So we're showing two amps. Let's go ahead and look at that with the other meter. With this meter, it gives us the option of measuring 200 milliamps and under. That can be done with this port or this 10 amp setting. When we select that setting, it's telling us this is only for DC amperage. So when you're picking out a meter, that's something that you have to be very careful about is what options are actually available to you. Okay, and we can see again about two amps. I hope that makes sense. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please let me know down in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you.